Okay, here we go. Hey, this is Carlos with Buckaroo Gear. Uh, first time in front of the camera. I, uh, I've resisted this for uh, long enough. Um, I'm not really a guy to be uh, in front of the camera. It's not my thing, but uh, a couple people that I know that I think they know what they're talking about. They are encouraging me to do this and get in front of the camera. So this is what I'm doing. Here we go. Um, in this video, what I'm going to do is go over the antiquing process of, uh, all right, antiquing finish, I guess you could call it, on a couple of belts that I just stamped yesterday, and hopefully you guys get something out of it. I've been, uh, I've been approached or asked several times on, uh, Instagram and Facebook on how I'm finishing this leather, and, uh, this is something that's fairly new to me. I've only been doing it for a couple of months, and, uh, I really like it, so... Um, it's kind of exciting to me to, uh, to do this with this, uh, or I guess I should say to do this on, uh, on the leather cause it's newer to me and it, and, uh, and it kind of brings new life into what I'm doing. So hopefully you guys enjoy it and you get something out of it. Thank you for watching. Okay. So these are a couple of belts that I uh, just finished up stamping yesterday, this morning, I lined them and so, uh, sewed them. Uh, these are just, uh, I think, a 9, 10 ounce veg tan. And then the lining itself is also that same veg tan, but I split it down with the splitter. Used it as a liner, then I then I sewed them. I sewed them up this morning. I'll throw some uh, video clips of that in there. And um, after I sewed them, of course, trim the liner and edged it with a number three edger and the edger I use is a Douglas turnback edger if you guys uh, don't know about these uh, Bob Douglas makes excellent tools uh, the best tools on the market I feel and this is a number three turnback edger um, I use this almost exclusively for everything I do I have a number three and I also have a number two that I use a bunch um, great, great edgers. And, uh, my advice would be if these are still available, my advice would be to buy them now, um, buy them now and, uh, buy an extra one. So there you go. So anyway, after I edged them, uh, I just hit the edges with a wet, uh, uh, sponge sponge soaked water or a water soaked sponge <laughs> and then uh use my trusty canvas cloth to rub the edges um so at this point what we have is uh just raw leather it's been stamped i got a rough burnish on my edges and all i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to take some olive oil and uh My favorite way to uh, apply oil of any kind is with uh, sheep's wool. And uh, you're going to take that sheep's wool. If you get it raw, you can buy it in little swatches from Tandy Leather. You're going to trim it down. Trim the nap down so it's not so, uh, it's not so, the pile's not so high and so thick. And uh, I've been using this one for a while, so it's already saturated in oil. And this is just olive oil. I used to use uh, Neatsfoot oil. I used Neatsfoot oil exclusively pretty much for 19 years. And then uh, I was watching a video. Um, shout out to Dom Gonzalez Saddlery. I've been watching his videos, and that's where I learned how to uh, do the antiquing process. I use his same process um, that he shows on his video. Anyway, um, he was talking about using olive oil. And olive oil, to me... Saddle makers I know, specifically uh, my good friend John Willemsma, he uses olive oil on his saddles. Um, I never did it. I always was told neat foot, neat foot oil was the way to go. But uh, uh, that Don Gonzalez, he said, hey, uh, olive oil is a food product. It's always going to be consistent. And you can go down to local restaurant supply or Walmart or whatever and buy it. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, switch it over to olive oil and I've been happy with the results so far so anyway what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some olive oil here 
and give these belts uh, a light coat of olive oil. And since these are uh, veg tan lined, I'm gonna have to go and I'm gonna have to uh, coat the backside too. Um, sometimes with the belts I do, I'll, I'll do them with a, a firmer shaft leather if I have it on hand, um, which I didn't really have any uh, shaft leather scrap that I, I liked uh, to line a belt with, so I didn't do it this time. I just used uh, the veg tan and I split it down and lined it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, make sure I apply it on my edge. And uh, one important thing to remember, I talked about burnishing. I already talked about using my edger and burnishing the edge. When you do that before you apply your oil and you rub your edges or burnish your edges, make sure you only use water. If you use gum trag or any other edge finish, um, you're gonna have a hard time, unless you really cut that gum track down with water, you're gonna have a hard time getting the oil to penetrate it. So I already did my initial burnish on the edge with just water. Um, I just applied water with a, with a, a sponge. So um, that's one thing you're gonna have to remember. Um, don't use any edge treatment when you're finishing your edges or burnishing your edges before uh, you apply your oil. Um, other finishes like uh, your oil dyes and stuff like that might penetrate a little better, but I, I, I prefer not to use any edge treatment like gum drag uh, before I oil. So I'll go ahead and gum, uh, gum track the edges and re-burnish them again after I'm done with the entire process of antiquing and oiling. So, there you go. That's about all I'll do for the finish on this belt. I'm going to have to get some more oil because I'm about out. And I'll go ahead and apply oil to, uh, to this one. This is probably one of my favorite parts about doing leather work is applying the oil and watching my work come to life. Um, right now, yeah, you can see the tooling, you can see the stamping, but once you apply a finish coat of some kind, it really comes to life and you can see it kind of change. And, and uh, this is one, one of my most favorite parts about the leather work trade is doing this. And right now I'm putting it on pretty heavy and, and uh, it's going to soak in and it's going to change colors a couple of times um, before it finally gets to where it's settled. And, and that's okay. Uh, don't worry about... Um, don't worry about that. The one thing you don't want to do is you just want to, you want, you don't want to saturate it. You're not trying to soak it. You're just trying to get a good top coat of oil on it. And you can already see it's already starting to set in there and make a change. And, you know, for the longest time, like I said, I'm pretty new to the antiquing process. I never really did it for 18 and a half, I don't know, almost, well, actually it's probably been 19 years. I never really did very much in the way of dyes, antiquing or other finishes to my leather. This is where I would leave it. I do a light coat of oil and this is where I'd leave it. Um, the thing I like about the dyes and the thing I'm finding is it just gives it, just like I said, when I apply the oil, to something, it gives it a, it gives it life, it gives it depth, it gives it, uh, it gives it character. Um, the thing I like about the antiquing process and and the and the dyeing process of any kind, any kind of post process like that, is it enhances it even more, and it's really cool to see. And uh, 
one thing you can tell, um, and I have an eye for it just because this is what I do for a living, but you can tell when somebody's using something that's hand stamped. Um, there are a lot of belts and a lot of products out there that are, that are embossed and, uh, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. And, uh, anyway, so one of the things that really, that really contributes to being able to identify that is the finish that you put on the leather. And so, um, uh, I thought I'd share this just cause. I had a couple people ask, um, and I've been messaged. There's a couple people that messaged me on Facebook, and one one gal messaged me. I think a gal messaged me on uh, on Instagram. So um, here we go. My first uh, my first how to. Maybe it's not a how to, but it's a how I do it. How I do it video. Maybe this isn't my first how-to. Well, it's probably my first how-to how to narrow, narrating it while I do it and actually being in front of the camera when I introduce myself. So anyway, so there's your light coat of oil. Um, I'm gonna let this set for, I don't know, probably 15 minutes and just let everything even out and kind of uh, soak in where it's gonna be. And then I'll come back and uh, we'll go to the next step. So we've let the oil set for 10, 15 minutes. It's uh, it's done doing what it's gonna do. And so now we're gonna take tan coat, uh, five inks tan coat. We got our wool dauber here. I uh, just trimmed it. It's a fresh wool dauber and this is my uh, preferred method of applying the tan coat. I've uh, I've tried a paper towel. I've tried a regular terry cloth towel, and I find this is the best way to do it because these, I guess these wool fibers, they get down into the details in the lower spots in the in the tooling and the stamping. So um, take this tan coat and we'll give it a. I guess we'll give it a thorough coat of tan coat. That's what I call it. I'm going to pay more attention to the tank or uh, to the top of these belts with the tan coat than I am with the bottom. So you're going you're gonna to see me keep on uh, reapplying the coat or the tan coat to the, uh, to my wool dauber here or wool, wool swatch dauber. I don't know what you want to call it. You know what I mean? So the more, the more you apply this, and the more evenly you apply it, the better your results are going to be with your antiquing. The tan coat is going to act as a resist for your antiquing. Now, like I said, I learned this from watching uh, DG Saddlery's uh, YouTube videos, and it and it works great for me. Um, there's probably several other ways to do this, but uh, anyway, I'm just showing showing you what works for me. And that's the beauty of leather work, right? It's uh, it's up to your own interpretation. There's no one right way to do anything. There's a million different ways to get something done with this leather work. Um, it, it's art. That's what's really cool about it. So that's about it. That's what I'll do for this one. I'll move on to this uh, 
flower card belt. Applying my, my tan coat. What I try not to do is I try not to let it puddle up there. See, you can kind of see where it puddles up and I don't, I don't really want it to puddle up. I want it to get applied evenly, especially on this tooled, this flower carved belt. I want it to be applied evenly and act as a resist more or less on your features that are close to the surface so your flower petals and your stems and your and your leaves i don't really want it to stack up in this background area because that's where i want the antiquing color to be more prevalent the antiquing is is mainly used to highlight to highlight the lowlights so what does that mean? The low lights. Well, the low lights are your areas that are down lower, your knife cuts, uh, your little uh, wiggler or your veiner, your uh, your shading, your pear your pear shade tool in your in your uh, flower petals. That's what you want your antiquing to do. So we're trying to get the tan coat more or less applied to the to the uppermost portions of your tooling. And uh, I guess like with anything, results may vary. It depends on how much you put on there. It depends on how specific you are about the application of this. And uh, there's only one way to figure it out. There's only one way to learn how to do it. And that's by doing it. You might not get the results you want the first time. It might take you a few tries. But again, that's the beauty of this deal. Um, what looks good to you might, lo might not look good to me and vice versa. So there's only one way you're going to know. And that's by doing it. And if you're doing leather work anyway, you already know that. It's a, it's a repetitive process. You just gotta keep on doing it. And uh, hopefully you get better at it. So there you go. That would be step number two in this process. And that's that tan coat.